Welcome to the Plato Paradigm, a paradigm shift in reading Plato's dialogues. Episode 164, IO 530D to 531B. Socrates has just given the impression that the techne of the rhapsodes involves, in particular, understanding the intent of the poet. Now, Io doesn't understand dianoia in this way. He understands dianoiai, the plural, as the intent in particular scenes, the, the way the poet wanted the scene to be expressed in a way which would appeal most effectively to the audience. So when he says, you're right, Socrates, he's misunderstood Socrates, but he's saying that it is true that he, as a rhapsode, has to understand how to express the words, which is not the same as actually understanding the words, which is what Socrates was getting at. It's this ability to express as well as possible each particular scene, each particular utterance by any of the people who are portrayed as speaking in the poem. This is what Io says has taken the most effort to learn in the techne. It is in this where he excels over other rhapsodes. In other words, he can express in a finer, more beautiful way than anybody else any scene of the poem. So it may look as though Socrates and Io are talking about the same thing, dianoia, but in fact they aren't. And this has to be clearly understood. I don't know yet where this is going, but we should make this distinction. Dianoia in the singular is not the same as dianoia in the plural. It does look like from Socrates' reply that he understands that Io has misunderstood him. Io leges o ion, delon gar hoti uftoneses moi epidexai. You say well, Io, for it is clear that you will not begrudge giving me a performance. What I've translated as giving me a performance here can also be expressed as to exhibit to me. The sophists also used to exhibit using this same verb, epidechnomi, but for sophists, any exhibition that they held was in order to show off what they could teach, whereas rhapsodes would give exhibitions as the only way they can actually do their job as a rhapsode. They have to give an exhibition. They could compete, but even in a competition, they are giving an exhibition. So when Socrates says, you won't begrudge exhibiting to me, he will expect Io to understand this as simply reciting some poetry, especially some part of Homer, which for Socrates would serve no purpose at all, which leads to the question why Socrates says this at all. Indeed, Io reacts in a predictable way. Kaimen axion ge akusai o Socrates hos iu ke kosme katon homeron, hos te oimai hupo homeridon axios enai chiso Stefano Stefano thenai. And indeed, it's worth hearing, Socrates, as I have ornamented Homer well, so that I think that I am worthy to be crowned with a golden crown by the sons of Homer. The sons of Homer are commonly referred to as a guild of rhapsodes, although there weren't guilds as such at that time. 
it's clear what Io thinks Socrates wants to hear from him, simply an example of the way he presents Homer and what makes him a better rhapsode than anybody else in regard to Homer is his ornamentation of the poetry. In other words, the way he says things, probably the music he uses with it, and the expression, the emotion. Why should the Homeridae of all people give Io a crown of gold? Well, the Homeridae uh, seem to have been based in Chios, one of the Aegean islands, where they worked hard on the transmission of the Homeric texts, and they taught the next generation of rhapsodes. However, the Homeridae were also connected with the Panathenaia, where the crown of gold is a peculiar prize, usually in games elsewhere, the, the Olympics or the Asclepieia, the prizes would be more plant-based, for example, a laurel wreath. All these crowns and wreaths were symbolic, and the winner would also receive a gift of money or some treasure as well. The main point here is that Io is referring to the upcoming Panathenaia, and he's simply saying that he believes he will win because he has ornamented Homer better than anybody else. And he's prepared to give Socrates an example of that now. Having manipulated Io into offering to give a sample of what he will give in the Panathenaia, Socrates, interestingly, brushes him off. This is not what he wants to talk about. Kaimen ego eti poiesomai scholein acroasa thaisu nun demoi to son de apokrinai. I'll still make time to hear you later, but for now, answer just this much. Poteron peri homeru monon de nos e, e kai peri hesiodu, kai archilochu. Are you terrific about Homer alone? or also about Hesiod and Archilochus. What I've translated as terrific is denos, which is the word we see in dinosaur, a terrible lizard, but denos became something like awfully good, terribly good, so terrific will do here. Socrates' question can be understood either in Socrates' general sense of understanding, does Io actually understand other poets or just Homer, while Io can understand it in his general sense of being able to express the poet in the best way possible, Hesiod is the first poet we know who actually wrote his own poems, and he's working in the oral tradition, but he is making shorter and more personal poems while exploiting the oral tradition. Archilochus was a little bit later, but also a very influential poet on later poets and he is accredited with introducing iambic meter udamos ala peri homeru monon hikonon garmoi dokeenai not at all but about homer alone for that seems to me to be enough is io being modest is he playing down his expertise in being a rhapsode? Or is he inversely snobbish by saying Homer is as much as one needs to be an expert at 
and I deal only with Homer, it seems to me that this can be interpreted as a simple, straightforward statement. It is enough to be able to remember thousands of lines of Homer, and he has had to learn how to express this particular style of poetry. Hesiod and Archilochus have very different styles, and it would take a lot more work to become expert at those as well. But why should he, since being an expert on Homer, will keep him fully occupied? Estide perihotu homerosticae hesiodos tauta legeton? Oi mai ego gekai pola. Is there anything about which Homer and Hesiod say the same things? I think so, and many things. Given that Homer and Hesiod are within the oral tradition, there are many lines which are similar between Hesiod and Homer, and Io is thinking of that sort of line he is able to express that in Homer, so there's no problem to express that just as well in Hesiod. But Hesiod also makes up new lines, particularly when he is talking about his own life experience. Potron un perituton kalionan exegesaio ha Homeros lege e ha Hesiodos. Homoios an perigetuton or Socrates perihon tauta legusin. So, about these things, would you expound more beautifully what Homer says or what Hesiod says? I would, in the same way, about these, Socrates, about which they say the same things. Notice that Socrates has engineered the question to be about the things which Homer and Hesiod talk about rather than the way Homer and Hesiod talk about things. It's the way that they talk about things which is similar, which allows Io to expound beautifully in the same way. It has nothing to do with the subject matter, and this will be important a little later, because Socrates is going to return to what he was driving at in the first place, which is whether the rhapsode understands the intent of the poet, and not simply understands how to convey the words in a beautiful way to the audience.